All right. Okay. Well, I want to go ahead and uh, share the, our presentation. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. Uh, while you're doing that, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. Um, my name is Karen McCoy. I lead the Career Center here at DePaul. Like I said, I've, I've been at DePaul for over 10 years and, um, um, and we've used it in a lot of different ways in the Career Center. So for instance, um, we use design thinking to think about, you know, like really big hairy questions like how might we engage a thousand students in a week? Um, and uh, you know, how might we uh, create a sense of community in a, in a virtual setting? Um, so those are some of the things that we think about and we use different brainstorming techniques that fit within design thinking to think about problems like that. Uh, thanks. And so Karen, so while Karen is in her role, the leader of the Career Center, and she thinks of, of it using it in usually larger scale a situation, a lot of my, what I do is one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And so when I meet students, a lot of times they're exploring and it might be that they're trying to figure out what to do with a major or they're trying to figure out like what kind of career path they could look into. And it might even be somebody who's recently graduated or uh, is an alum and a career changer. In each one of those situations, I have to meet with someone and to you go through these steps of design thinking to help solve a problem, to help give them options, ideate options, then think about what works best and then try to prototype going through these uh, different steps and test them out, test out these ideas. One way might be like following up with alumni and meeting them with one-on-one -on -one informational interviews or to have them student shadow, that's a form of testing. And so it, it cycles back. You might go and meet with the, uh, the mentor or the uh, alum and say, you know, this isn't quite what I thought. So you might come back and say, all right, let's, let's tweak it and, oops, and why don't we go ahead and just jump on in. All right. Yeah, and just um, so all of you know, um, we are recording this session because we had um, quite a few people that were interested but knew they wouldn't be able to join us. So we are recording this in order to be able to send it out to everyone else. Um, so just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. And here we go. All right. All right, so just in a broad nutshell, today we're gonna to uh, cover the overall broad concept of uh, design thinking, giving you a quick overview. And we'll dig into a few of these steps. Uh, they can vary a smidge, but we'll cover with the, the more um, popular steps for design thinking. We'll provide some examples of it. And so a couple of uh, success stories that have happened out in the real world. We might even get, actually we'll have time, we'll be able to show you a couple of job descriptions where design uh, thinking is being asked or as part of the job description. And then uh, we'll wrap up with questions and giving you some next steps. For those of you who are interested in design thinking and developing it more, we'll have some different links that you can jump in and you can try some things for free to help develop skills in that area. So let's jump on in. What is design thinking? Um, for sake of time, uh, we have a couple of videos and we are going to send this to you after we're finished today. But what we're going to do is just kind of uh, show one and we're going to help streamline and uh, use our time as, uh, as most efficiently as possible. So. When you go to a hardware store to buy a drill, what do you want? Is it the drill or the hole the drill will create? What customers are interested in? and what they will remember are outcomes and experiences. Seventy-four percent of consumers say they have spent more with a company due to a history of positive customer experiences. Eighty-six percent of buyers will pay more for a better customer experience, but only one percent of customers feel that businesses consistently meet their expectations. Design thinking is a person-centered approach to designing outcomes and experiences to delight the customer. How does it work? One, empathize. It starts by putting yourself in your customer's shoes. By empathizing with people through observation or open-ended interviews to uncover what people do rather than what they want. Because if you ask people what they want, they don't know. By immersing yourself in your customer's world, you can understand their needs, gains, and pains. Two, define. Once you've empathized with your customer, you need to filter out the non-obvious insights. What's the aha moment from the observations? 
what's the problem to be solved? Three, ideate. Now we know the problem, what are some solutions? The best way is to diverge and look at all possible solutions, no matter how out there. Then converge into solutions that are desirable, viable and feasible. Four, prototype. Now we've got some solutions. Let's bring them to life in the cheapest, fastest way possible. Five, test. Now let's go back to the customers and ask what they think. Let's test their reaction to our prototype. Design thinking starts with the customer, then offers the solution, not the other way around. To see how design thinking can generate novel ideas to delight customers, check out our video, Design Thinking in Action. To learn more about the Strategy Group, visit our website. So now you have kind of an idea about what is design thinking, and now let's talk a little bit about um, why does it matter? Yeah, thanks, Ed. Um, so design thinking, as you saw, there's there's a lot of different steps to it. And, and when we think about what skills are most in demand right now and, and for the future, it's things like creativity and innovation and problem solving and critical thinking. And design, design thinking contributes to all of those. Um, also, when you think about problem solving and, and innovation, those are things that can't be automated. So these skills um, are really important and can really set you apart. The second thing is that design thinking is, is universal. And what we mean by that is it can be applied across almost any job in almost any industry. And as Ed, Ed said, we'll share some, um, some job uh, titles where we actually found design thinking listed in the job description. It was actually pretty easy to find. Um, and then the third thing is that it can actually be applied to all aspects of your life. So it's not just about um, the, the, your professional world or the working world. You can apply this to your academic world. You can apply this to your personal life. Uh, go ahead to the next slide, Ed. And um, the other thing about design thinking is as you develop your skills in design thinking, you also develop the ability um, to do other things as well. Um, as John Spencer, who's an academic, he created this, this graphic about what happens when you embrace design thinking. And as you can see, you become more empathetic. You become a systems thinker, which means you can see how things fit together. Um, you are ready to be more creative. Um, you become uh, more inclined to take some risks. You embra embrace failure a little bit more and you learn to to learn from failure. And so ultimately, all of these things make you a much better candidate for any job. So um, when we were talking about it can be used in different industries, I was curious to see myself how this would work. So what we did was uh, just basically did a very simple thing that all of you can try. Went on um, indeed.com and just typed in design thinking and focused on the Chicagoland area. And I was surprised to see how many positions were uh, posted and more impressively was more impressed by how, how many different areas uh, it was in. So then I was thinking, I was rubbing my channel. I was like, you know, okay. So I, I was like, you know, I noticed a correlation here. So, notice, so what was interesting was I noticed that there, you know how DePaul's Career Center has different career communities that there are um, these correlated, these positions correlated based on the career community. So if you are interested in the business entrepreneurship and consult and, uh, and consulting community, like I found an entry level position that was a marketing intern, but then also found one that maybe required a little bit more experience as a business consultant. And then even in like a, a non-for-profit, uh, education non-for-profit in government, here's one that was looking at policy research to uh, ones that you might typically see more of this uh, in the technology and design career community with a service designer and a scrum master. Um, even in like healthcare, this was working for um, uh, one of the hospitals in the area and this was somebody who was conducting research education. Um, I believe that was with uh, the UIC's healthcare area there. And then even something kind of fun like in our, in our MCAE, the, uh, the media and arts and entertainment community, uh, basketball, I'm um, like an NBA uh, sales manager. 
And so we have these all hyperlinked just to save time. I'll send this to you so you can look these over. But I thought it was very interesting to see how each one of these wanted some aspect of design thinking. And they all are in different kinds of career communities. OK, so um, let's dive into uh, the nitty gritty of design thinking and what are the steps. So depending on what you read, where you look, you will probably see anywhere from four to six steps associated with design thinking. Um, they all involve the same basic process, though. Um, the first step is always about identifying the problem. In this case, they show it in two ways, the empathize and define. So the reason this is important is if you don't know what you're solving for, it's hard to come up with the, sol the solution. So it's kind of like that old saying, if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to know when you get there? Um, so identifying the problem always begins with empathy. Um, it begins with thinking about uh, the end user. It takes place um, through things like uh, observation. So observing how people are behaving. It can take place by asking questions, but it's ultimately about getting into the minds of your customers. You want to look for things like body language or what people care about or if they're behaving in unexpected ways. And when you have, when you feel like you have a good idea of what people really need, then you can jump into that step of defining the problem. Um, in design thinking, uh, problems are often phrased using a, a how might we question. So for example, how might we create a sense of community while connecting virtually? How might we engage 1,000 students uh, a week with the Career Center? So that how might we is a way of just framing the problem. So once the, the problem is defined, um, then it's time to ideate. You want to just start generating ideas. And in this step, it's important to come up with as many ideas as possible. You don't want to limit yourself in any way. Um, you can come up with just some really off the wall ideas because the more ideas you have, um, the more likely you are to find the best idea. And there's all kinds of tools that you can use to facilitate this brainstorming process. One of them is called a mashup, and you can find a lot of information uh, about that online. And then when you've settled on one specific idea, you want to bring that idea to life by creating a prototype. Now, this could be a physical thing. It could be a sketch. It could be a recording. Um, but the thing to remember with prototyping is that perfection is not the key at this stage. stage. It's more about creating something that people can react to. Um, and once you have that, then it's time to share the story. It's time to share your idea and test things out. So you want to put it out there, get some feedback, learn from what works, learn from what doesn't, and then you keep iterating. You keep improving on, on that idea and you continue to share and collect and it becomes sort of this cycle. So those are the, the basic steps of, of design thinking. It's focusing on the user to make sure you understand the problem, identifying the best solutions for that problem, creating a prototype and testing it out. And for some, for those of you who would like to know a little bit more, I think the empathy piece is really what is, makes us unique is that very first step is getting into the shoes of the person or the, solving the problem is getting into the shoes. And they actually have a way that you can sort of map it out here. And so if for those of you who are interested in this first stage, uh, feel free to take a look at this video. It goes on for about six minutes, but we thought it was interesting enough to include and you can sort of see the model, the theoretical model of the actual the model that they use when they're working with, with um, working one-on-one. -on -one. With folks, so I will have that there for you in the presentation for them to you. And then some examples. So um, there are a couple ones I think of that we wanted to use. These are pretty popular ones. Some most of you have heard of. And looking at the two, I thought it between these two, and I use both a lot more so than I should. But um, I think we'll go ahead and start with Uber Eats. We'll just we'll use Uber Eats as the example. So here's what Uber Eats did. And actually, they Chicago was one of their first cities to to experiment with. 
Um, they kind of came into a situation where there was some complaints and some issues. So what they did was they, their first phase in the uh, empathy phase was, was, was an, they used an immersion technique where um, Karen mentioned there was a lot of observation that they use observational studies in this immersion technique where they visited the city and they looked at the specific challenges within each market city and they interviewed restaurant owners, they interviewed the consumers, they interviewed the drivers. And so in doing that process, one of the things that they found out, the problem was that, and many of you who are living in Chicago realize this, it's a little bit difficult to find parking. So a lot of times Uber Eats is not always aware about, so they had to figure out, oh wait, parking's actually a thing. Another one was locating entries into the restaurants. If you're a driver and you're rushing around, you gotta go inside, where's the entry? Where's the entry? You're running around. These are just things that they kind of figured out and identified as the problem. So in defining this, they were able to ideate um, with the step-by-step -step directions. They, they came out with two different processes, two different apps they used. They tested prototypes using both A and B testing to kind of like known as a split testing. And then they, 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 they looked at deliveries. They looked at uh, what the feedback was from customers. And then, so, you know, what they did at, at, at the end was they did continuous innovation. They looked at different kinds of ways where they could move rides and deliveries together. Um, they looked at, uh, they had this neat thing called a restaurant sales dashboard where chefs can tweak the dishes based on the trend of what's sell, selling the most. And then they could provide innovation workshops to find novel solutions that continue to uh, continue to try and retweak and move forward. And that was what I thought was interesting about just one example with Uber Eats. You can also see that Airbnb did the same thing when they were trying to figure out pictures and folks trying to uh, book, book there and they moved that on. And now if you go on Airbnb, you can see like plenty of pictures to help you get a better understanding. Well, both of these are two examples um, just to get a better idea about how they use this process. So, so, oh, go ahead, Ed. Okay, so one of the things we've been focusing on at the Career Center is we've been conducting upskilling workshops, especially for folks who may not be working right now or are still kind of in the job. Um, this might be a good, it's good for anyone, um, but upskilling allows you to add new technology, new um, things that would complement, new skills that would complement your role or projected role, something that you would like to shoot for down the road. And these are super easy, um, especially if you're a current student right now, you can jump on LinkedIn Learning. And in LinkedIn Learning, I would say they have three different levels. The first level is sort of like a quick overview. So if you watch this and you say, I'd like to dig in just a little bit more. So uh, you can go on LinkedIn Learning and get an overview of design thinking. Let's say you want to dive up and so go beyond the baby pool and like wave wait up to say your waist or a little bit more. Um, they have actual courses that you can take. And if you're really digging those courses, then they have almost what's kind of like a certification. And so that uh, core design thinking is in LinkedIn learning. And um, that is like some significant uh, commitments. That's like what I call waiting up to your neck. But once you can, if you get through that, it, LinkedIn will post that you completed it. And so your colleagues, your peers, and prospective employers can see that you completed that certification. And so that will give them, it'll let everybody know your level of commitment towards something like design thinking and that you're really interested in it, even though you may not necessarily have a degree in whatever it is. But this is, this is something that you can, I would do try LinkedIn learning and course. Yeah. Well, and the link that we provide that you'll get in the presentation, it actually takes you to a learning path in LinkedIn Learning that's called Stay Competitive Using Design Thinking. And it contains eight individual courses covering all the steps in design thinking. So you can take all of them. You can take just one or two. The other thing is if you just search for design thinking in LinkedIn Learning, you'll actually see that the results show 54 different courses and a whole bunch of different videos. So a huge number of options on there. Okay. And what, I'll mention one other thing. So uh, on Coursera, which is on there, that link takes you to a free course offered by the University of Virginia called Design Thinking for Innovate, Innovation. If you haven't tried Coursera, the nice thing is that it's free. Um, and you can put as little or as much into it as you want. This particular course is a four week course that I actually took. Um, and they have a new session that just started yesterday. So you might actually be able to join that. 
Um, and the last thing that we mentioned here is to look at how you might apply this in your own lives. What are your frustrations? What are your problems that you're facing? And how can you apply design thinking? Just try it out to, to see if you can solve those problems um, that you have at home and see if you can make it fun. So let's take a look at next steps. So for next steps, uh, so uh, you could try LinkedIn uh, Learning or Coursera to see if you can upskill. Um, you can, we, as we mentioned earlier in this presentation, you can join in a career community and meet with your career advisor or anyone else that's working in the community. Talk about how you can include or incorporate this to your prospective career or how you might highlight these kinds of things on your resume, your cover letter, or on your LinkedIn. Uh, a lot of students are, uh, do not know that we have an alumni service where uh, folks who graduated from DePaul can be to you. That's uh, known as network.com. And so, uh, alumni, to, uh, they can give you some advice. They can give you some shadowing. They can, you can meet with them for some informational interviews. Um, so that's a service that's provided to all of you, even after you've graduated from DePaul. And then I, you, uh, what I would start with is go to the slide where we had some of the job descriptions. Look at some of the job descriptions. I always give this as advice to students. Think about, think backwards, like read a description and go, huh, where do, what do I like about this description? And what are the skills where I feel like I have that, have that ability? And where do I find that I'm maybe a little bit short? And then you go, hey, you know what? I like this. I know that I'm short here. I can do a gap analysis. These are the kinds of skills that I can go back to the upskilling section. And then so build those skills so that you're ready to apply for those jobs. Um, and at this point, uh, just keep in mind that design thinking can be applied to any job and almost any job in any industry. So with that. We yeah, we have about one minute. Yes. <laughs> for questions, we and we're happy to, happy to stick around for a little bit and, and answer questions as well.